Today, we have with us two architects who had a very prominent architectural firm in Havana from the years 1952 to 1961, Jose Helaber and Rosita Navia. When you were studying architecture, who were the architects that you most admired? Paul Rudolph and Richard Newter. Why Paul Rudolph? At that time he was innovative. He was different. And also at that time it was what was uh, Walter Gropius and Jose Luis Serge. They were the for us the main architects at that time. How about of uh, older generation of human architects. Did you admire anyone in particular of the old time architects? Well, we admire them because uh, they, they start what we follow later because they have to follow the Spanish rules and for us it was easier to make change in the ideas. So actually, both of you started in the um, new architecture, in the modern style of architecture. You never practiced old architecture, like Art Deco. You never practiced no, Art Deco. We never worked in the old times. How did architecture transition in Cuba from old architecture, let's say, including all the different styles, into modern architecture or modernism? Well, the main advantage was the new publication, the coming of architects from outside that were, in some kind, they were modernists at that time. And we follow their uh, ideas. As we follow the ideas in Cuba, for example, that were our two uh, main guides in Cuba. <clears throat> for example, uh, just to read that I remember Fran Martinez and Mario Romagnash. And they were the ones who started doing new modernism in our design and our ideas. So Fran Martinez actually was before uh, the time when you started practicing? It was a short time, but it was before. before. I remember from the times I was at the university that I heard that uh, a few years before, uh, there was like a big change. The students revolted and they took off all the books of ancient yeah. architecture and burned them. That was Vignola. the burning of that the Vignola. Was, that was the, there was a lot of book of Vignola. I was the old, let us say, the old architect. And some professors, they insist in repeat their ideas, their drawings. And then a group of architects, young architects, I studied. They, they, they start some kind of movement to burn all those books. And they did that. We don't agree with that. We agree with the idea of changing the way that the design was followed in the university. I forget about the idea of Vignol and all those uh, old styles, but not to burn books. What did, you, what did you think about the old architecture that was uh, so popular in Cuba and that has carried up to the modern times that tourists and people go to Cuba to admire? Was the, the, old, the old architects, they did a wonderful work doing those designs. And if you follow them, even now that everything is almost destroyed, it looks different. And that is what makes Havana looks different. Those old styles, that they keep sometimes alive. But they, if you go there, you will see that modern buildings 
chi better than those, those women that they are almost destroyed by, by their family, they are too old. It seemed to me that it was a good idea to keep that. If they keep those buildings, Havana will look different. Well, now all those buildings that go destroyed by themselves, it looks like a city that is crumbling. I don't know if I explain myself clearly. But so you did, outside Cuba, you, did design, you did design in different cities in Cuba? Yeah. Yes. If you had to choose one building and say this is the one building that we treasure the most of the ones that you designed, which would it be? You see, the, the Cuban American Cultural Institute we practice in different countries. And... Now, this is one question that I often hear. How were architects considered? Everywhere we were really considered. You have uh, how many sons and daughters? One son and two daughters. Two of them are architects. And our granddaughters are lawyers. Ah, lawyers. <laughs> very good, very good. That's what you are Unforgettable Oh, near or far Like a song of love That clings to me How the thought of you does cling to me never before someone in more unforgettable in every way and forevermore and That's why, darling, it's incredible that someone so unforgettable thinks that I am unforgettable too. Unforgettable. Ooh. 